Welcome back guys. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the reasons why you cannot be a good medical biller. So I got this idea from another YouTuber. I'll put her name on the screen. It's Wayna World. And I got it from her video. She did six reasons why you are not a good interior decorator. And that's a little something about me that you can learn that I love interior decorating. I am in no way, shape or form a expert at it, but I do love it. I love to watch people make over their homes and their rooms. And I kind of do a little bit myself here. So it brings me joy along with medical billing. And I thought that I would do a video similar to hers, but the medical billing version, of course. So I just wanted to give her her props for her video idea. And if you're interested in interior decorating, she has some really good videos on her channel. So please support her over there on her channel. But we're going to be talking about medical billing today. My name is Tamika, if I did not introduce myself. And I am a certified professional biller for over 16 years so if anybody knows a little bit about why you cannot be a good medical biller, it would be me. So first and foremost, you're not willing to start in another position. So I know if you have been interested in medical billing in any way, you've probably heard that it's not that easy to get a job in medical billing. And I really don't want to say that because different people have different journeys, different experiences when it comes to billing. As far as with me, I actually went from being a bookkeeper to being a medical biller. But you know, everybody's story is not the same. And a lot of people cannot be, you know, get jobs as medical billers. But what I like to tell them is to start off in another position. You might apply to a front desk position, whether that is the check in or the check out position, or you might apply to a hospital where you are in registration, you are in the cashier in section, you're, you know, you're somewhere else that is not necessarily medical billing. Now, I would never say that it's a waste of time if you start your way that way because number one, you're getting your foot in the door. You're getting your foot in the door as um, it being in healthcare in general. And a lot of times people say they don't have experience, but you don't necessarily have to have experience in medical billing, you can have experience in a position that is kind of attached to it. And what I mean by that is if you're at the front desk and you are checking in patients, you are checking eligibility and verification, you are, you know, filling out registration forms, this has a link to do with medical billing. Because if it's not for the front desk person getting all of this information, we then cannot do our job. I can't just take the notes from the doctor and send a claim out and I don't have the patient's name, their date of birth, their insurance, who I'm sending it to. And all of that is collected by the front desk. So it is all tied together and it is all a part of the revenue cycle, which I did a video about that and it should be linked here above. And it's the introduction on revenue cycle because if you know anything about healthcare and the revenue cycle, it is all a circle. Everything is connected. So I would say try to get your foot in the door by maybe getting a job in another position and then that might make it easier for you to get a job as a medical biller. Then there's the fact that you're not organized. I spoke about this in a Instagram live that I did because it was weighing on me and I just felt like I needed to talk about it. But being organized in medical billing is one of the top characteristics or traits or whatever you want to say that you should have as a medical biller. Now you're sending out claims. Yes. You're talking to insurance companies, you're posting payments, you're doing all of that. But if you are not organized, that whole thing is a bus, you know, <laughs> it's not even going to work because there are times when you send out a claim because you might think you can have everything in order. And I'm going to send out a claim. I'm going to um, follow up on it. I'm going to post payments. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But if you're not organized in how you do it as, as far as prioritization and then following up on doing it, because I can follow up on a claim. 
there can be a claim that I sent and then I followed up on it two weeks later to see if it was paid or not and then something happened and I have to follow up again on it a week later and then I have to call a representative you know, two days later and then I need to call the patient. And this is just one claim. So if I don't stay on top of it, if I don't stay organized, I'm not going to remember to do that because then I have more claims, new claims that's going out and new claims that I need to follow up on and patient statements that I need to follow up on. They're just going to be so many different things. So you need to be organized as a medical biller in order to be a good medical biller. So if organization is not your strong point, you need to make it your strong point. Then there's the fact that you're not persistent. And sometimes you, I don't even, I'm not even going to say sometimes. A lot of the times you need to be persistent when it comes to getting claims paid. Especially if you know that you are right in what you're saying. You know, an uh, insurance company may deny a claim, may tell you that it's a duplicate, may say that they never received the claim. And sometimes you just let that go. You know, you might say, well, you didn't receive it. I'll send it again. But sometimes it might be the fact that you are right close to the timely filing limit and you had three months to file this claim. You did file it. You filed it on time. And when you call, because it's been a while, you didn't hear anything. They say they never received the claim, but you know that they did get the claim. However, that may be there. You might have sent other claims. You might have sent 10 claims. They got nine, but they just supposedly didn't get this one. I mean, there could be many different scenarios. Sometimes you have to be persistent. You might have to call back, get another rep. You might have to say, I need to speak to a representative, a higher representative, your manager. Um, you might just, you just have to really be persistent because I can even give you an example. I just called an insurance company and they were telling me that they didn't receive my claim. My claim that I sent, I had sent the original claim, but then now I sent a corrected claim. A lot of times when you send corrected claims to insurance companies, they take it as a duplicate and then there's no payment. They say, this is a duplicate of the claim that, I, that you already sent. There's no payment. But if it's a corrected claim, you need to say, no, it's not a duplicate claim. It's a corrected claim. So I'm telling the representative that I know, you know, you got it. I sent it this time. He's saying, oh, no, he didn't see it. I said, well, can you please just check? I sent it by fax on this date at this time. Can you please check it? All of a sudden, it reappears. Then when it reappears, he says, oh, well, this is a duplicate claim. And I said, no, it's not. It's a corrected claim. Because if you look at such and such, box 22, this, that, and then third, you will see that it's not a duplicate claim. Then he tells me that, oh, that's not where the duplicate information needs, I mean, the corrected claim information needs to go. It needs to go here. And then it's like, no, it doesn't. This is where it needs to go. So sometimes you're back and forth. You're just persistent, persistent. And if you're not, if you just let that go, then you're going to be losing, getting paid, especially when you're supposed to get paid. And that's what we don't want in medical billing. You're being resistant to learning new things. That's another reason why you're not good at medical billing. If there's anything that I would say is very important other than being organized, it would be being a learner, being a continuous learner, not getting stuck in the fact that you think you know everything and you've been doing this so long or you've been in this specific specialty for years so you know all of what's going on because that is untrue. It's just not the truth. You know, we have new insurance companies. We have new policies, regulations, guidelines, and things always change. So yes, it may get a little redundant and you have been billing for specific codes all the time. You send a claim to Cigna for the past 10 years and this is how you sent it, but that doesn't mean that it's always going to stay that way. <clears throat> so that's why I also promote being certified because when you're certified, then you're required to get CEUs which is continuing education units. And that means that you have to maybe take some classes, join a webinar, go to a local chapter meeting, you know, just do something so that you can learn more about your craft. You just don't want to get stuck. So if you are resistant in learning new things, you're going to have a hard time when it comes to being a good medical biller. 
And so this one, I really, who really, 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 it touches something in me. And that is that you're all about the money. You're only about making money, 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 money. I know that money is important. I would never say that it's not. We have to live. We need money to live. But if money is your only reason for doing medical billing, for being a medical biller, you will not be a good medical biller. You have to be able to, not even be able, you have to want to know the job, to learn the job, to learn more about the job, to help the patients. Because for me personally, a part of medical billing is also dealing with patients and dealing with their insurances and making sure things are being paid right. So if that's something that you don't care about, if you don't care that the claim was sent and six months later it's still not paid, then that means you don't care about the provider that you're working for and getting him paid, or you don't care about the patient and making sure that the insurance pays for their claims and that everybody is happy. You know, I have seen times when people say, cause I work remotely and I also work in a doctor's office. And sometimes people say, I don't like to deal with, or providers would say, I don't want to deal with, um, medical billers that are remote because they don't follow up on claims. They don't, um, you know, do certain things that they're supposed to do to get the provider paid. And that is because in general, they may not feel like, maybe they might feel like they're not getting paid enough. So they are not going to do all this extra work, but it should not always be about money. If you signed up for a job of being a medical biller and doing the medical billing, then that's what you need to do. If you have a problem with what you're being paid, yes, you should speak up, tell the doctor, speak to whoever is paying you, but that shouldn't stop you from doing what you know is right. So it should not be all about the money. And now this is my opinion. So if it's not your opinion and you just feel that it should be all about the money, that's on you. But I think that you're not a good medical biller because you're just thinking only about money and not about the provider and the patients. So if you're interested in more videos like this one, click on this link here and it will take you to another video just like this. I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching.